remember, um, as the reference sheet helps you see, and as we've developed, if you have simple harmonic motion, we kind of have defined it as um, motion that's harmonic, but it's simple because a single sine or cosine wave gives you the motion, gives you that up and down, oscillating, fluctuating, whatever you want to call it, okay? That's what makes this simple. However, there are other ways that you can write simple harmonic motion that don't look like they're a single sine or cosine wave, but they really are in disguise. Um, the question then becomes, well, why would you do that? I'm hopefully going to demonstrate for you why that would be useful, okay? So I'm going to do two examples, easy one and a hard one. Here's the easy one. Um, if you think about what the standard form um, of simple harmonic motion is, how would we write it? How would we usually write it? A. Whatever you want to call it. It can be an x naught, b, v, or not v actually. Um, any other kind of constant. Plus some lot of this, right? And of course you can substitute in cosine, or you might have a minus sign instead of plus, but you get it. That's the general form, okay? In the question I'm looking at, this is 12 by the way, which I think I assigned. They give you this. Um, this is the question. Their displacement equation is somewhat different. <laughs> it looks like this guy. Okay. So this does not look like simple harmonic motion, but because of what we know with trig identities, it is, okay? So I want you to remember. Now, to be fair, the question itself, which this is um, giving it to you in, holds your hand a little bit, okay? A little bit. What I want to do is convert this into, I don't want to have that squared there. I don't mind any coefficient of t that you like. That can be two, four, six, eight, whatever, but I don't want that square. So what identity shall I use? I should use double angle, okay? Now, so that I don't confu get confused with two t's or half t's or four t's or whatever, I'm just going to state double angle in its normal form. That looks like this. Cos two theta is equal to? Okay, now it's easy to get the signs, it's easy to get the signs wrong. Like is it 1 minus 2 cos whatever, or is it 2 cos minus... So to help you remember, uh, what I always appeal to is just go back to the original one. Go back to this guy. This is where the form that you're talking about, this is where it comes from, and it's quite hard to get this one wrong. Most people get this one right. Um, we know that cos squared plus sine squared is 1, cos squared minus sine squared, okay, we've got that, okay? So from there, I'm just going to get everything in cos squared. So I'll get rid of this guy, yeah? So that'll turn into cos squared, take away <coughs> one, minus. 1 minus cos squared using that Pythagorean <coughs> identity I just mentioned. And now you can see, oh, that double negative. That's why it's two cos squared, minus take one. away one. You just remember okay. that like cos is always superior in cos Whatever works for you, like I said, um, this is the strategy I, I have sort of settled on. So I've got that. Um, how am I going to use that here? What cos am I going to do to this? Okay, so hold on a second. I've got, a, I've got some number of cos squareds over here. So the first thing I'm going to do is make cos squared the subject of this. I don't mind leaving it as 2 cos squared because in fact I have 2 cos squared here. But I will put that 1 plus... 2 cos theta over there. Does that make sense? Did I not start it? I think it's just dim. I think it's just dim, that's all. It's just super dim because I'm running low, that's all. Okay, now, at this point, at this point, now I talk about this. Like, is it 3t, 5t, whatever? I don't want to get confused between this double angle and that double angle. So I'm just going to say, if theta is 2t, okay? If, I even write it, if theta equals 2t, then I'm going to get 1 plus cos what? 4t equals 2 cos 2t squared 2t. Which is the thing I wanted. Yep. Okay. I'm ready. Change color back. I'm ready to actually now work with this thing. I've got 3 take away that. That's my 2 cos squared 2t. Two yep. So I'm just going to go 1 plus cos 4t, like so. And let's see, what have I got here? 3 take away 1? 2. 2. Uh, and that's a negative cos 4t, and I'm done. Yeah. Did I do it right? 3 minus cos 4t. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Now, um, when you have a look at this, what are you going to do? Like, well, you can answer questions based on this. I like to say, okay, here. Yeah. I like to say, draw yourself up a rough set of axes. You can see there's a, um, there's a center of motion 
Right, what's the center of motion? Just reading that off the equation. The center of motion is just this constant out the front. So if you want to say one, two, like that, and you go dot, 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 there's your center of motion. What's my amplitude? It's this coefficient here, which is one. So I'm going to be between one and three. That's where I'm waving in between. Okay. Now, do I start at the bottom or the top of motion? Because how do I know it's the bottom? So number one, you can say it's the reflected cos graph. So re usually, if that was a 2 plus, it's just the normal which starts at the top, comes down, but I've just moved the whole thing up, but I'm reflected. The other way, if you get confused by that, just put t equals 0 in. Just put t equals 0. That'll be 2 minus 1, which is 1. And then you say, oh, okay, well, therefore, if I'm at the bottom now, I've got to go up and down and up and off you go. Okay, so obviously you get asked questions about that. How long does it take to pass the origin? What's the maximum speed, etc. You can work that out. Okay.